Hi, I am Onufri, a software engineer at Google working on Google Cloud. Together with my coworker, Ulysses, we'll walk you through the problem Goose Goose Ducks. Hi, everyone. My name is Ulysses. I'm a software engineer working on YouTube. I enjoy being part of coding competitions in the past as a competitor and now as a contributor. That's cool. I've also been involved in Code Jam for something like 13 years now, first as a competitor, then as an organizer, and now mostly as a problem author, in particular of this specific problem. Awesome. So let's get started. What is Goose Goose Ducks about? In this problem, the ducks have infiltrated the first international geese conference. So we have a group of participants, the geese, wandering about, and a number of pieces of evidence that we should use to identify the conspirators, the ducks among them. Cool. What type of evidence do we have? We have two types of evidence. First, we know the time and the place of every conspirator meeting, and we know that all the conspirators were present at every single meeting. Okay, all the bad dogs meet here at time five. That's simple. Second, we have pieces of evidence provided by the participants. A participant of a conference can tell us that together with another participant, they were present at a specific time and place. Are all these pieces of evidence true? How did Goose One get from one corner to another so quickly? I thought each beer covers only one meter of distance in one second. Well, the good geese never lie, but the evil ducks can. However, we know that a duck will never contradict an earlier piece of testimony given by a goose. So, in this case, someone lied about where Goose One was. Can we figure it out who it was? Well, if Goose Two is really a good goose, then Goose Three lied and contradicted it. But you just said that can happen. So, we know Goose Two is actually an evil duck. Yes, exactly. Note, that Goose 3 might also be a duck, and we have no idea where Goose 1 was at any specific place in time, but we do know that Goose 2 is secretly a duck in disguise. And so Goose 2 needed to get to the meeting place from time 6. So Goose 2 couldn't have been where Goose 1 claims it saw it at time 5, right? So Goose 1 is also a duck. Right. But what about Goose 3? We don't know. It could have told the truth about Goose 1. Goose 3 could be a good goose or an evil dog. What should I do? Well, the problem asks you to return the smallest possible non-empty set of ducks. So in this case, that's two. Awesome. I look forward to seeing how the finalists solve the problem. Me too. Remember to try out this and all the other finals problems on the Google Code Jump site, g.co slash code jump. Thank you for watching. Hey, I'm Samiksha. I'm from Kickstart team, and I will walk you through the problem goose goose ducks. The key in this problem is to carefully look out for all the rules of consistency and then derive implications from it. We have two main information which is given to us in the problem statement. First is set of meeting points for all the ducks that were present in the conference room. And second, and also note that all the ducks attended every meeting in this list. Second, we have a list of statements that were given by birds about both maybe a goose or maybe a duck of where they of where they were and with whom they were and all this is in a space time point so now let's take one bird in the conference room let's say name it as a now we construct a path for a and how do we construct it it's like we check out all these statements that involves a and also we take into consideration all the meeting points. Now, let's say here we have P1, P2, and P3. Now we want to check if it was possible for A to go from P1 to P2, because remember that we also have a max speed limit in the problem statement. Now, the another observation is that we would only look at the consecutive points for A, and that we can do it in the logarithmic complexity for this particular part of the problem. Now let's say now, once we com computed the uh, speed, and let's say it's not under the limit, then we have three cases.
yeah, the first case is when both P1 and P2, the consecutive ones, they both came from meeting points. That's not possible given the constraints in the problem statement. Second, we have, we can have like one is coming from a meeting and the another is coming from a statement. I will explain it about it later, but let's also check out what's the third case. The third case is when both of them are statements. Now, if we go back and remember the problem statement, we have certain rules. One is a goose would never lie and a duck would always try to be consistent with what the goose has said before it's recording, before it has recorded a statement. So there, based on that, if we have the second case, then this implies that if A is a duck, then B is also a duck. And in the second case, sorry, and in the third case, uh, it's a case that we know for sure that it's a forced duck. One thing to uh, check out here is like how we will decide which one is the forced duck. So we will look at who claimed P the PI or PI plus one. For that, we will check the ordering of the statements of when it was recorded. Note that this is different from what we were fo uh, following till now. We were following the ordering of time of traveling in the conference room. So let's say if PI was recorded first, then the claimer of PI is a force duck. Now, once we get the force duck, we would have to remove it. And again, we have to check the new adjacents. Yeah. So in case of forced ducks, we don't, we already, since the problem says to find out the minimum size set, we, we, our work is done, we would output the number of forced ducks we were able to find. Otherwise, what we would do, we will model our knowledge into a graph, a graph where whose vertices are uh, birds and the edges are implications. And what are these implications? Like if I say, if there's an edge between A and B, then if A is a duck, then B is also a duck. So we will have these edges, and then the problem reduces into finding the smallest, strongest connected component in this graph, and note that this strongest component should, connected component should be a final one. Yep. Mm. And for more details, you can, go to the analysis of this problem, you can refer that and thank you.